I'm kind of panicking when it comes to mining because right now, especially with Bitcoin mining in particular, I'm actually losing money. So what am I going to do? Mining is my business. Hey, I'm Bosk. You're on the Bosscoin YouTube channel. I've been working really hard to build the Bosscoin mining farm over the past several years. And since the Bitcoin halving happened, it cut Bitcoin mining profits in half. And Bitcoin has not gone up enough to offset the halving of profitability, which because there's half as many Bitcoins put out to miners every day now. So I'll give it some time, looked at the data, I looked at my electricity rate, and uh, just like that friend scene, I'm, I'm gonna have to pivot here. I'm working on building out a bigger mining farm that will reduce my electricity rate by 20 to 30 percent. And then I'm also looking even beyond that to supplement my electricity with solar panels, basically generate some of my own electricity, effectively reducing my electricity cost even further, at least once those solar panels are paid off. But I'm behind schedule with the mining farm expansion. and. Uh, the short of it is I cannot run enough miners to get into the industrial electricity rate that I need. Uh, I, I pretty much need a three phase electrical build out in order to do that. Uh, so I've got a lot of uh, Bitcoin miners. Uh, I've got about 30 of them. Most of them are here on this pool. Just to give you a quick snapshot, you know, I've things from latest generation S21 Bitcoin miner and M60S. Those are some of the latest gen, most profitable, most efficient Bitcoin miners you can have and operate. I also have some old stuff like S19J Pro 104s, a 96 terahash second version. We go to page two, we'll see some of my lowest performing miners. You'll see I even have a T19. I don't have anything lower efficiency than that. Uh, and I ran these numbers in a recent video, but basically some of this gear is not efficient enough to break even, even when I underclock them or undervolt them, or basically I'm trying to make these Bitcoin miners as efficient as possible. I have a lot of altcoin miners too, but this is where it gets even worse. So I, I'm, I'm out of electrical capacity kind of at the moment. I have more amps than I am using at my disposal. But basically to harness another 400 amps or so of my electricity, it's gonna require a substantial infrastructure build out. So with my mining farm expansion on the horizon, is it really worth it, right? Uh, I've gotta buy miners. I've gotta pay the electric bill, which for me is 10 cents per kilowatt hour uh, currently. And so I've got to account for the electricity, I've got to account for the miner cost, and then I also need to recoup the infrastructure investment of buying more wire and all the other associated infrastructure for you know deploying and running ASIC mining rigs and other miners. ASICs are application specific integrated circuit. They're, they're custom computers purpose built, right? And, and ASIC miners, all these silver boxes you see with, they got normally four fans on them. They all look the same, yet they're made by like 20 different companies these days. Uh, but the point here being, right? I don't want to spend a bunch of money building the farm out this year if by early next year, I'll have you know all of the electricity in my fingertips with the three phase build which requires different electrical infrastructure so sure i could potentially reuse buildings i may or may not be able to reuse immersion setups and even i'd have to rewire some air cooled setups so there's just a lot that goes into it and i don't want to be playing a losing game if mining bitcoin isn't profitable at home anymore it might be time to check out hosting alternatives have you heard of revolution mining they offer hosting options for asic miners within the us their texas facility has rates as low as seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour and they're maintaining a 98 percent yearly average uptime Miners are hosted in a secure facility with 24 seven monitoring and support, and they support altcoin miners too, like Caspa. To learn more about Revolution Mining, check out our link in the video description below and be sure to use code BOSSCOIN to save. Thank you to Revolution for sponsoring this video. One of the reasons I'm, I'm caught in this situation is I've been super excited to get the Nanopod into review. Uh, and unfortunately, this has just been delayed uh, several months and then several months again. Uh, I currently utilize an M300 mini pod. 
uh, by Digital Shovel as my air cooled solution. And then I have Immersion, uh, which is liquid cooled solutions. Uh, so I have my mini pod maxed out. Uh, that's the bottom line. It, it is at full capacity on uh, my single phase build with the way that it's currently wired. Uh, so with this, depending how I wire it, I could easily deploy another 12 miners in here and even up to uh, potentially it can fit 27 full size bitmain amp miners or even 35 uh, watts miners if you have the electrical capacity for that. I've even filled up the immersion mining shed uh, with a bunch of different uh, immersion solutions. It's like my fantasy factory for mining. Really cool, really fun, a bit overwhelming, and it's been a bit difficult uh, to really build out with so many different manufacturers. They're all different. Some of them are quite different. Uh, a few of them have been pretty intense. The Falk Action ones have been the easiest to deploy uh, by far, uh, which is pretty cool. These are nice units. I enjoy them. Uh, it's been a good experience. Uh, so much that we're proud to be an affiliate with Falk Action and have the best coupon code you can possibly use if you want to grab any of their gear. We also have a, if, if you ever want a digital shovel, if you we have a link in, below, in the description below, gets you 5% off. Uh, so, you know, why not, right? If you're gonna grab one, why not get the savings? Uh, it, all that stuff supports the channel, I appreciate it. And yeah, we make content on Voscoin, you know, the YouTube channel, the content creation side, that's part of the business, but the mining farm is getting really serious. Uh, and I'm trying to do things right, do them once if I can. Uh, so any way I look at it, it just makes like, like if you're, I've talked about this before and if you're breaking even on miners, that's just like DCAing into crypto dollar cost averaging. It's like, I'm just buying the coin all day, every day. That's fine. That's fine enough. I operate as a business. So my electricity is an expense. So I can even run at a small loss. If I have other miners that are profitable or I have other pieces of the business that are profitable that I can run that profitability against, uh, those losing miners. There's a lot of ways that this can be advantageous for me from a business point of view. Uh, but at some point, right, when you look at the mining profitability and you look at this device and it's losing $3 a day, it, it's, it's going to get harder and harder to make a case for that one. So if we really believe in it, in Bitcoin that much, I, I well, should we just buy the coin at that point, right? You know, I have a sunk cost in the infrastructure, uh, in the miner. Um, and fortunately, most of my miners, especially Bitcoin miners, are paid off. But this is where it becomes even more complicated for me. I am out of electricity right now. Uh, so we are about to expand our immersion mining setup with a fog hashing C6. We have the B6D model from there, which is basically the predecessor to the uh, C6 model. So that's, that's cool and exciting. And that's going to give me the ability to deploy six more miners. I already have four miners that are running in places they shouldn't be, and one needs to be repaired and I just haven't fixed it yet. Of course, that's an ice river miner uh, because I don't have the electrical capacity for it at the moment. For example, yesterday I needed more juice. So I unplugged a Bitmain Ant Miner S21, one of my best Bitcoin miners, uh, because it was very easy math, a good location, easy to just do quickly and get back to it. Uh, because the S21s consume around 3,400 watts, which is a lot, of, a lot of juice. It's a lot of electricity. Uh, it's on the higher end of miner power consumption. Because we just got the Dragon Ball KS6 miner in yesterday. Uh, and so this is a very expensive miner. It's a very profitable miner right now. I mean, this thing is pulling around 50 bucks a day. And if you compare that with the S21, right? You know, I'm pulling in three bucks a day after I pay the electricity bill. It cost me $8.40 to run approximately at 10 cents. So what the future holds, I don't know, but even if we just go day to day, you're obviously gonna take 50 over the three. So that change was made. But the point here being that I'm really trying to get at is I have all of these miners that are barely profitable of breaking even or at a small loss because they're all tuned to efficient settings. Like that's why all of my S19J Pro 104s are hashing around 80 terahash a second as opposed to 104. Uh, they're using a thousand less watts and they're mining at about you know a 20 percent or so reduction in uh mining uh performance thus making them more efficient right i'm reducing the power consumption by like 33 uh, percent or 30 percent or whatever and then i'm in, uh, decreasing the hash rate uh which is like the power by like 20 percent which means if there's a discrepancy with more power reduction versus uh, hash rate reduction, we're improving the efficiency. We're spending less watts per terahash of mining performance. Uh, so, cast mining has been crazy. It's been all the rage. 
I need to make a decision. I, I don't know what the future holds for everything. Uh, these miners won't all be good forever. I'm not really interested in buying miners, running them, and then what I think is maybe an optimum time to sell it, I'll go ahead and sell it uh, and then do whatever. I'm pretty much here to run my miners into the ground at this point. So I need more electrical capacity to do that. I need a better electricity rate and I need to do something to get more headroom. And that's not clear. When I say headroom, I need something to get more available electrical juice right now. Right. So I've just decided I'm just going to have to unplug some of these uh, until I can uh, deploy more and more mining infrastructure. In the future, I'll be able to run several hundred miners, but right now I don't have that capacity. Uh, over the next month, because my, my like I, I literally have a tracking number on my new C6 unit, which will give me the plus six miners, which I'm excited for, uh, but that's only plus six. I've got a couple other miners on the way, uh, and I, I plan to get some other miners, you know, in the future beyond that. I gotta start, you know, just chucking some of these out. So once I'm done recording this, unless you guys have a crazy idea, please let me know down in the comments below something else I could do. I'm gonna go head over to uh, Home Depot and I'm gonna grab some of these storage containers and I'm gonna take my least profitable miners. And when I say least profitable at this point, these, these are gonna be the miners that are losing me the most money, uh, some of these Bitcoin miners. I'm gonna take them out, put them in here, and uh, hopefully when I get a cheaper electricity rate, they'll be worth plugging back in. One thing that may come to mind is, well, why don't you use like a co-location facility? Why don't you send some of your miners off to, uh, you know, daycare, right? And they can go and they can mine there and I can get them back whenever I want or never, whatever. Uh, that, that, that's an option. Uh, that's something I could do. Uh, but it's not something I'm particularly interested in. Because to get to my electricity rate that I need in the future, I need to pull half a megawatt minimum to hit that electrical rate to get the reduction in price. So if all my gear is somewhere else, I've got to just go out and buy more and more and more. Maybe in the end that would work out to be a better thing. When some of these miners only make even on a cheaper rate, you know, a couple bucks a day, it's going to take me a while to even recoup the shipping cost there and then in the future back. So I don't know, it feels like I'm moving in the wrong direction with this stuff, but I have to just operate with the chips I have on the board is at least how I feel uh, right now. Uh, so for example, I have a lot of K7s and they're still pretty profitable. Uh, I have uh, 12 at my mining farm and one actually at a hosting facility, or actually three at a hosting facility, which is with Quantum Expeditions. We've talked about them. I've got some equity uh, in that company. So it's pretty cool that the way they're doing a crowd uh, raise for their hopefully future publicly traded mining farm. Uh, so I'll drop a link if you want, but I'm not, I'm not trying to like show stuff, I'm just explaining. Uh, so I've got these and I'm thinking I'm gonna grab some fan spoofers, give these the good old Dunkaroni. You know, some of these containers, right? Like, you know, I could take a C6 and throw six in there. Or really, I'm gonna be taking things out of my DCX and my B6D uh, containers and putting these in there and figuring out what to do with these less profitable Bitcoin miners. The problem is once you dunk stuff, I mean, it's it's, it's nasty. Immersion fluid is kind of nasty. You know, I, I don't want to sit here and clean these things uh, to the point where they can be safely and not, you know, get gunked up instantly running in an air-cooled environment. Uh, so it, it's a very permanent solution. The miners that I am pulling out of these tanks or will, uh, they're just going to sit in these tubs until I can put them back into a tank. Uh, I operate time negative pretty much every day. And to be frank, I'm pretty burnt out with a lot of things. I've been running and gunning for quite a while. And uh, over the years, it's taken its toll. I talked about that the other day. But the point is, right, I I'm trying to make the best decisions I can with the pieces on my board based on the real time data and the status of the, the market and what I think the future holds in conjunction with something that will not absolutely obliterate my life. Uh, so yeah, I do have a backup plan if I can't procure this nanopod here in the near future um, that I'm just gonna take the electricity uh, panel that I had marked for it and actually already wired for it and just pull two 100 amp circuits off of that and I'm probably just gonna deploy uh, two more C6s. This is gonna be a pretty easy unit to flip over to three phase electricity in the future. Then I would also have three C6s. Uh, so at that point, you know, I would get, you know, spare dry cooler, spare pump on hand. Uh, and that way, you know, 
if anything ever has a failure in the future beyond uh, its warranty period, uh, then I will I will be covered, good to go, and I'll be able to make a you know real time repair on that gear. Uh, so you know, as someone who's working heavily on building their own mining farm, I have to understand that you know I, I need to make things that are realistic for me to manage and repair uh, because if you go down this route. I mean, and you do it yourself. I mean, you are doing it all yourself, unless you find you know a good contractor or some service to do those things. But of course, those things always entail costs. Mining is absolutely. I think this is a funny topic. Mining is absolutely so easy with just a couple miners. It really is easy, passive income. But once you start to scale it, there is just there are so many growing pains. Uh, as you go to scale, especially depending on how you go about scaling. Air cooled is a lot easier to you know get up and running and, and go, go, go. Uh, but there are downsides with the fans uh, as well as the miners get nasty depending on your environment or the filters. And although immersion mining isn't really easier, there is something, maybe it's just because it's fresh to me and I'm in a way bored of air cooled mining, but there is just something very addicting about liquid cooling your miners. And there is a unique efficiency uh, to it and let me tell you it's nice that I have your ears ringing and I always have to wear ear pro or realize that you're permanently damaging your hearing being around these extremely loud air cooled mining rigs so yeah I mean just to kind of round it out uh, we look at these numbers right you know I have almost all of these miners like I have an S19J Pro maybe not the plus an S19J and S19 Pro I think S19J Pro and S19 I have the 90 terahash version which isn't even here and uh, all of these devices at their stock settings so mine, mine are doing better than this but they can only do so much better are losing right a couple bucks a day uh, even things like the S19K Pro, which is a pretty recent release, end of S19 Bitcoin mining li life cycle uh, miner. These things are basically breaking even. And don't get confused because this calculator always puts in six cents like your mining farm. If you got 10 cents, you know, closer to like a good residential electricity rate like I have right now, uh, then you'll see that it's not as green. Uh, but also to put it into perspective, right? So if I had a seven cent rate, these would be pulling two bucks a day. After I pay for a 464 uh, electric bill, that's exciting, right? I mean, you got 30 miners that are at this point, like all paid off. To be frank, many of them were cheap to get into. Uh, when I grabbed them, most of my Bitcoin miners cost me like a thousand bucks um, or were exchanged for coverage on the channel reviews and things like that. Like uh, if you saw our crazy video or went out, I, I bought 10 of them for $10,000. That was that was a pretty exciting day. You know, but I've got this gear and, and let's say we got 10 of them, right? 20 bucks times 30 times 12, right? We put seven grand additional year after expenses on miners that are paid off on a coin that's generally speaking going up on average uh, over time, right? I doesn't, I think that Bitcoin will absolutely double from its current time or price sometime in the future, right? And obviously these super rough numbers, everything's always changing in flux, but I mean, that's gonna be a cool 14 grand after expenses on paid off gear. And if something dies, I have replacement parts, you know, on hand or on, on, on site. I don't have to buy a new power supply. I've got a bunch of spare power supplies and control boards and uh, you know, all, I'm, all it's going to take me is an hour to figure it out, go over there, pull it out, replace it, put it back in, and we're, we're back at it. So yeah, it, you know, it's just kind of a sobering thing to take a step back and, and realize that I'm, I'm farther away from the expansion of the Vosco Mining Farm than I want to be. Uh, and making you know those realistic, tough, pragmatic decisions uh, based on my current situation. I can't be mining on hopes and dreams just like they couldn't race on that in Fast and Furious 1. There's no engines. What they plan on racing with hopes and dreams? I've got to run what I've got. And in that case, I need to prioritize my most profitable miners and I need to be pulling out my least profitable miners until I have excess electrical capacity and infrastructure to be able to deploy them. For example, a big air-cooled uh, mining facility as well as say a big immersion mining tank, right? I mean, there are mining, immersion mining tanks that are you know, 24, 24, 24 bays. I mean, they even make uh, shipping containers that are customized for it now. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm actively working on all this stuff, but uh, I just kind of wanted to share my plan. One, you know, for you to dissect it. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think this is a good idea, bad idea? Why? What would you do if you were me? Um, if maybe you're doing anything remotely similar, hopefully my information and data uh, helps you with that. So, hey, I'm Boss here on the Boss Queen YouTube channel. I'm going to close this out with 10 seconds of Tales, who, of course, is our CGO, our Chief Genius Officer here at the Boss Queen YouTube channel. You know we run 10 seconds of Tales on every video. So, again, thanks, and I uh, hope I see you here on the next video as well.